Hi, this is Michael Paul, New Orleans Scottish Rite College. I want to talk a little today, do a short video on uh, some mails that I've received about our last video on the Masonic Lodge experience. And I've had some questions from several asking about what to do if their lodge is having trouble. And I've been given information that the lodge is having problems, they're having low attendance, uh, lack of interest, and their concern is that the lodge is failing. And uh, there's several ways to look at this whole situation and I wanted to see if we can take a little look at some of these issues and see if we can find some way to identify the problems and see about turning around a lodge that can be turned around. I imagine the first thing that we should do is uh, identify and separate a lodge that is actually in trouble and in danger of failing with one that chooses to operate on a more minimalistic level. And a lodge that chooses to operate minimalistically would be one where there are no real programs in the lodge. Uh, the lodge experience, as we mentioned in the last video, would be one uh, more where they come for a meal, so visit with their friends, uh, opening and closing a lodge, regular business, maybe every now and then a degree. And if a lodge chooses to operate like this, then that should be their choice. They shouldn't be required to change into something that, that they may not like or appreciate, uh, especially if what they're doing is working for them. Uh, maybe they enjoy meeting in blue jeans. And if you change that, then they could take a lodge that is successful and actually create problems for it where it may end up failing. The difference would be if a lodge that is failing would be one where they cannot have a quorum. Uh, if they don't do something, uh, they will fail within not too long a time. And maybe they uh, would need to change their manner of ritual or something uh, and when I say manner of ritual, what I mean is improving their ritual as one of the big problems that I've seen in some of the lodges which do fail is the members do not even know how to open and close a lodge properly and there's a building of frustration on a number of levels from this and it all creates an atmosphere of um, unsatisfaction and once they start down a, a path of, of uh, failure, it's hard to turn that around. One thing we should also consider is that everything in the universe exists in cycles and there is a natural cycle for lodges and while the case may be that in most chances and most times a lodge is sick and not really dying, there will be times when no matter what we do or attempt to change uh, a lodge will have gone so far that there's no bringing it back. And if there is a, a time that we see a lodge is dying, then what we should do is contact the Grand Lodge for assistance and they can either tell us things to do, maybe we could merge, the lodge could merge with another lodge, or find out the procedures that our Grand Lodge has in place for handling any assets that the lodge would have. Uh, fortunately, most of the time, a lodge that is in trouble is more sick than dying. And there are things that we can do in order to, to correct the sickness that's in the lodge. And one of the things that is the most common and simple way is the matter of perception. And that is how we perceive ourselves and how we project ourselves as a lodge. Um, it can be from any aspect of how we perform our ritual, how we dress, how we uh, present ourselves in the lodge building, whether it's clean or dirty, uh, the meals that we fix. All of these elements add to an overall perception of worth. And this is something that cannot be overstated. Value is subjective. Uh, I recently saw on the news where there was a painting that someone bought in a garage sale for 50 cents. They're turning around and selling the painting 
for ten thousand dollars one person perceived its value to be very low another realized that it was actually far more valuable than that and you will always see this um, what we must never do is undervalue ourselves. when we first go about trying to repair a lodge or fix it or do some changes to make it more viable the first thing we should do is objectively evaluate the lodge, its members, what goes on, every aspect of it and see where we can make changes. Um, no matter how you think of it, perception is everything. Uh, in addition to the story about the 50 cent picture that was selling for thousands, there was another where Amazon ran a whole series of paintings and they were paintings by the masters but they were not identified as such they simply were put up there for evaluation and what do you think of this painting and they gave a price tag of about five hundred dollars vast majority of the comments were negative it was the idea that they were not aware that this was something important and as such they judged it harshly. Appearance is very important and it says something no matter whether we want it to or not. Um, I worked for a number of years late nights in a downtown area. Uh, I learned that for self-protection what you wanted to do was to give the appearance that you were not the best target. A mugger would try to find someone who was weak and appeared weak. You wanted to project an air aura of confidence of a little bit of a problem that they would probably want to pick someone else to uh, try to attack. Uh, one evening I was walking and it was uh, about 6.30 I was going to dinner and it was in the winter time. I had a jacket on and it was dark and I wasn't paying that much attention. I was more thinking of where I was going. I was going to get my car to drive to pick up some dinner. And uh, all of a sudden I realized that I was coming up on an elderly couple. And both of them were, were nervous looking back, which I was projecting an image of danger with the idea that I was trying to keep muggers from jumping me but I didn't stop to realize that that image that I was projecting was scaring this elderly couple who I was coming up behind quickly. So I crossed over the street. If it is our image that a lodge that comes with the members in blue jeans and polo shirts or t-shirts or dressed casually, that's fine. But we have to understand that there's an image projected for this and by this. And if we want something different, then we have to project a different image. Uh, what a lodge would need to do is if they were failing or if they realized that they were sick and they were not dressing like this by desire and a successful lodge at, at best, then they would want to make the lodge appear first off as if what you're going to is a special event. It would be best for a lodge to simply dress up a little bit. Coat and tie if possible. If not possible, at least dress clothes, a nice shirt, nice slacks. This will give the appearance that something is important all the members who would be dressing like this would be taking a little extra time to, to make themselves more presentable for the lodge and inside their head they would say I'm doing this because this is something important. Second point would be learn the ritual. There is no excuse for officers in the lodge to not know the simple opening and closing ritual. If a man is not capable of learning that little ritual, he shouldn't be an officer of the lodge. 
uh, everyone wants to go through the chairs and do the job, but if it can't be done, then it can't be done. And the lodge that has officers, and sometimes I've seen multiple officers, where they simply cannot do the work, it creates an atmosphere that is negative, and we should learn the work. Uh, other aspects, they, they, uh, lodges that provide a meal, take a little time to plan a meal, plan what's going on, even if it's dishes like uh, bringing in covered dish night, where you have someone rotating and calling various members, would you bring a dish, would you bring a dish? If a lodge has facilities to cook, plan something that's a little different. Make the experience good and unique. If you act or look unprofessional, then that's how you're going to be perceived. And if the officers in a lodge act like they don't know what they're doing, or worse yet, they don't care about what they're doing, then this will be the message delivered to the members. And this will give very good reason for members to look for something else to do on Lodge Night. If your Lodge desires to change, then you have to think about what you're doing at the moment. At the very minimal, the Lodge offices should make every attempt to look and act as if they completely respect the positions that they hold. Uh, if you are lucky enough to be appointed a district deputy grand master, say, or any grand lodge office, uh, you've achieved an even higher status, and this should be received as an honor. Uh, I have seen at times individuals coming to Lodge with Grand Lodge aprons dressed in jeans or khaki pants, polo shirts, casual. This reflects on the Grand Lodge. If you have a position, be it in the Lodge, a Lodge officer, or the Grand Lodge, everything you do should reflect respect and appreciation for what you represent. That apron you wear, be it an officer's apron or a Grand Lodge apron, you are expected to uphold everything and you represent that body, be it the Lodge or the Grand Lodge, and it is due respect. Another problem that develops in Lodges is one where there seems to be inexperience on the part of the Lodge officers. And I remember some years back visiting a Lodge and the Worshipful Master was conducting the meeting and there had been obviously over a past few meetings before discussion on purchasing something that was very expensive for the Lodge and there was a lot of discussion as to what they should buy, how much money they should spend on it, and all aspects of whether or not this was a good purchase. A committee was appointed, and the committee at the night I was visiting made its report, and there was a motion made. The Worshipful Master uh, opened up the Lodge to questions on this matter. Uh, some of them were speaking in favor of the purchase, some were saying, no, there's a problem with the purchase. I oppose it for this or that reason. Everything was going fine with the discussion. And then one brother stood up and requested to speak. Master gave him permission to speak. And he begins talking about an event that was happening the following month. And he had tickets to sell for this event. And he wanted to know if anyone would uh, be interested in purchasing tickets for this event. Well, the master stopped him and he said, brother, you're out of order. We're right in the middle of discussing uh, this matter that we're about to vote on. Uh, you're welcome to discuss this, but it'll have to be after the uh, lodge meeting is over. From across the lodge, another brother 
stood up and pointed directly at the brother and yelled, No! I want to hear this man speak. I'm interested in attending this event. I want to hear this and hear about this event and see if I can buy a ticket. Go on, brother. Finish what you're saying. The master backed off. The man continued. I was in shock. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. This was a total disrespect to everything in the lodge. The master is the one. Now there were two problems. One was that the master should not have backed away and allowed this type of a disruption. The other brother should not have done this. Turns out that the brother who stood up and made this was something of a kingpin in the lodge. And regardless of who was sitting in the east, the perception was that this brother was in charge of the lodge. And everything that went through, went through him sitting on sidelines. Now, this is a deep problem for that lodge. Now, I was visiting. It wasn't my lodge. I felt, well, I felt bad for the entire situation. But in cases like this, this is absolutely unmasonic. A worshipful master is in total charge of the lodge. If a master feels that something is out of order, his word is final. Anyone who objects to that should be objected from the lodge. The master's duty is to reduce to order anyone who causes disturbances in the lodge. Um, far too often problems develop in lodges because you start with a small problem and when it's not corrected it grows and the more you allow this problem to continue it grows and grows until you have a massive problem that can't be corrected and this has caused the actual failure of more than one body when a problem happens in a lodge you deal with it the master's job is not to be unfair you don't be a successful worshipful master by being a tyrant that's not what the duty is on the other hand you don't help the lodge by simply allowing others to take the part of the master even though they're not sitting in the east there's a time when you say this is as far as we go and you do not cross this line and you mean it Lodges have to operate within a certain structure, and if they don't, the only thing that can happen is destruction. If you belong to a lodge that is failing, and if you are in a position of leadership in that lodge, then you have a choice. Either you have to do what it takes to change the way things are and the direction you're going, or you have to make the choice to do nothing. If you choose to change, then you have to be willing to do what it takes to make the change. The fact is that many times young Masons with a little bit of interest are grabbed quickly and shoved into positions that they're not really seasoned for yet. They become worshipful master of the lodge before they even understand what Masonry is all about. This is a fact. It doesn't change the fact that we all have responsibilities. If you choose to accept a position, then it means you have a responsibility. Take the time to learn what it means to be an officer. Take the time to learn what it means to be worshipful master of the lodge. If your lodge is in trouble, if you're having problems, low attendance, Look objectively at what you're doing and what your lodge is not doing. Do the minimal examination first. Make the changes. Make a professional appearance. Have the offices dress properly. Dress up a little bit. If your lodge is not a minimalistic lodge and if you are having problems, have the offices dress appropriately. Take a little time to do that. Hold instruction nights. Find someone 
who knows the ritual, make sure that at the very minimal, your officers know the ritual. Create some sort of events. Invite speakers to your lodge. Have programs. And I have to stop for a second because when I say have programs, I once attended a lodge that was having an education night and they were having a featured speaker. And the feature speaker for the evening was giving instructions on how you can repair your automatic transmission on your car yourself rather than spending money for it. That's not what we mean by Masonic education. Find a book on masonry, study some part, have a presentation on some aspect of Masonic philosophy, Masonic ritual, Masonic history, anything that pertains to Masonic education. Have that as a feature night. Uh, create events. Have better meals in your lodge. Work with whoever is doing the cooking. Try to be a little creative rather than just having hot dogs or spaghetti. Try to plan things out and try to figure what you're going to be doing, not just for the next meeting, but three, four meetings down the line. Plan out your year. If you don't have a plan, then you won't know where you're going and all of a sudden it will be over and you still will not have started the year. This creates the problems for the next master. This creates a downward spiral. One other thing that you should be aware, if your lodge is in trouble, don't be afraid to ask for assistance. Uh, each Grand Lodge or most Grand Lodges have research societies, a uh, research lodge, any group uh, library, but a center where there are uh, those who are seeking more out of masonry. You may be able to get help for your lodge in the way of speakers and such from these groups. Also national Masonic societies, uh, the Philalethe Society, the Masonic Society. Links for both of these organizations will be down in the bottom after, um, in the credits area along with some recommended books. But take the extra step to try and look for events to make each lodge experience something special. Improve ritual. Have a false degree. Uh, just put on a degree even if it's no candidate involved. Uh, an exemplification is always interesting. Find out what the rules and regulations are from your Grand Lodge and maybe you can use a ritual that's no longer being worked for an exemplification. Each Grand Lodge is different. They'll each have their own rules on such. The number of ways that you can save a Lodge far outnumber the ways that causes a Lodge to die. Lodges die from apathy. Members are not interested in what you're doing. Make them interested. Lodges see groups of people there, the officers, who don't give an appearance of professionalism or really caring. If you don't care, they don't care. Uh, in every case, take what you have and make the most of it. If your lodge is shabby, if it needs cleaning up, the master should organize with the officers a work detail. Come out and spruce things up. Make the lodge nicer in appearance. Work with others. Do whatever it takes to make it attractive. To make coming to lodge something that the members will want to do. Uh, hold joint meetings with other lodges. Uh, work within your district. See what others are doing. Find the lodges that are successful and visit them. Ask the master of that lodge, what are you doing? Ask your Grand Lodge, what programs do you have available that can help our lodge? Keep working at all times to generate interest and work and study the basic elements of Freemasonry. By doing this, you can take a lodge that is having poor attendance and if you have several officers in line with like mind 
all on the same page, all with the same goal, you can turn things around in not too long a time. Uh, I appreciate your viewing, appreciate all the letters. Please keep them coming. We actually have several more videos lined up that will be done soon uh, dealing with males that have come in questions and we have a series of Scottish Rite videos coming along the line also that's in prop it being developed right now. Uh, I very much appreciate the interest that has been generated from these videos. Uh, stay tuned. We'll be back soon with you.